two points. One is an understanding that everything that human beings suffer from is normal. Not one person here has had an experience that is unusual for human beings. Not one person that you have ever met has had an experience that's unusual for human beings, even the murder of children. So there is something to be gained from a transition a little bit from just my storyline to humans who have to deal with a great degree of possible suffering. And to be able to hold your own dose of it with a kind of compassion based on not the drama of how horrible it is, but just how hard it is to be a human being who can be hurt in so many ways. You know, if you'll think about it, the things that are most important to you, you have almost no control over. I mean, you know, every time, and we all know this, every time one of our loved ones, like, leaves the house or gets on a plane, you know there's that little second of anxiety. I hope they come back. Hope the plane lands. We've learned to manage that. But every one of us has it. You know, somebody drives away, or the, particularly with planes, you know, there's just that weirdness, like, Wait a second, they're going up in a tube. You know, seven miles up in the air at 530 miles an hour, and they're coming back? But there's that, that every single day, every single one of us has that tenth of a second of, God, I hope they answer the phone, that they're okay. Hope they got to work. Hope they get home. Hope they're fine. There's that, right in the midst of the daily activity, there's that gut reminder. It could be, it's just like this most of the time, but it's always there. And we know that anything can happen. And we pray that it doesn't. So we exist in an absolute sea of vulnerability. We can't protect those we love. We can't keep ourselves alive, often if we want to. And less dramatically, but more common, is we can't force anybody to love us if they don't want to. That is the most poignant and horrific human vulnerability. You know, we could raise kids, we could do the best we can, they could meet somebody who doesn't like us, and we could go years without seeing our own children. Can't stop it. Or we could decide that we've met the perfect partner, and they could decide we're not so perfect. Or we could decide that they're perfect, and they could agree with us for three years and six months, and then change their mind. Or we could decide that we want this partner for 19 years and they decide they only want us for 16. We cannot control love at all. And so we exist in this unbelievable sea of vulnerability. And when it's triggered, when, we, when it's pierced, when we're forced to acknowledge that vulnerability, Instead of re-cementing ourselves in the vulnerability, we try to attack. And we, we settle on, this is the cause of my vulnerability. This is the cause of my problem, not my humanity. And so that's how we can create an enemy that can last forever. Instead of opening back up to, to, to vulnerability and even goodness. The way I see Lack of forgiveness now is like, it's like a solar eclipse. You know, we have the sun, 
something gets in the way of the sun during the eclipse and we make believe the sun's gone. So like, you know, something bad happened. Okay, there's no sun there anymore. But that's all made up. The sun never went anywhere. Forgiveness is you move away from the eclipse and you go back and you see the sun. It, it never, it, there was nothing that changed except our perception. And the mistake that we make is we get so tied into our drama of who hurt us or how we failed that we lose track of this raw human, both vulnerability and goodness, that's underneath it, that was never safe in the first place. And instead of blaming the ex for making us unsafe, we pull that back a little and say, wait a second, I was never safe. Thank God the ex loved me for nine years. But that takes a certain amount of courage and truth-seeking. 